Hello there and welcome to this video on servicing a Humor regulator. In this video we're going to be concentrating on the regulator found in the BRK XR bottle rifles. So rifles such as the Commander and the Pathfinder. To save us a little bit of time I have already removed the regulator from the rifles. However if you require a full disassembly guide for your particular rifle you can find a full video disassembly on the BRK YouTube channel as well as a full workshop guide on the BRK website. The next thing that I'll mention is that if you need any O-rings for your regulator, Humor Air sell a full service kit for these regulators. The kit contains all of the O-rings, a spare white sealing disc, as well as a small amount of silicon grease. And again, that can be purchased directly through the Humor Air website. And the very last thing that I'll mention is that before you take your regulator out of your rifle, it is advisable to note down the current set reg pressure. And that's just so that you can reset your regulator to its current set point when you go to rebuild the rifle. The regulator pressure gauge will be on the side of the rifle and should be nice and easy to spot. With that all said and done, we can begin on the disassembly process. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the locking screw from the top of the regulator and that's done with a 2mm allen key. With that done we can use a flat bladed screwdriver to remove the adjuster screw from the end of the regulator. And once that's screwed out all the way we can just pull the adjuster screw out from the front of the regulator. Then putting our finger over the end of the regulator we can flip it over and then use an M4 bolt to gently remove the regulator piston. And there the piston is along with the white sealing disc on the end, so we'll just make sure that that doesn't get lost, and we'll gently put the piston down. Now there will still, yes, in this regulator there still is a couple of Belleville washers hooked up in the body there, so we're just going to use our bolt and remove those. Because of the grease involved, sometimes the Belleville washers do stick to the regulator body. So just make sure there's none left in your body as you take the regulator apart. With the regulator fully disassembled, the next thing we'll do is go through each of the O-rings and their function. So starting off with the regulator piston, and on this piece we have two O-rings. The top one, which is this one here, and then the bottom one. The top one's job is to stop high pressure air from escaping through the threads. And if this one has failed, you'll see a small consistent leak through the threads here. The next one, the one on the bottom, is to stop high pressure air from bypassing through the regulator. So this o-ring here stops high pressure air from entering the regulated air chamber. If this one has failed, you'll be getting excessive amounts of regulator creep or the regulator pressure itself will eventually climb to the bottle pressure. The next two O-rings, these two on the regulator piston, seal off the Belleville washer chamber. The Belleville washer chamber is always bled off to atmospheric pressure, so if either of these two O-rings here have failed, air will be able to travel through into the Belleville chamber and then out to atmosphere. There is an atmospheric bleed hole on the side of your rifle, and I'll put a picture on screen now as to where that is. Next up we have the three O-rings present on the regulator body. This top O-ring stops high pressure air from leaking out between the joint of the regulator and the regulator housing. The next two O-rings, these two here, seal off the atmospheric bleed hole. So if either of these two O-rings have failed, air will be leaking out the atmospheric breathe hole in the side of the rifle. Again, I'll put a picture on screen now just to show you where that is. With that done, the next thing we can do is remove all of the old O-rings so we can go ahead and replace everything. So to remove old O-rings, what I like to do is simply pinch either side of the O-ring and then force it off to one side. That produces a hump in the O-ring, which we can then get a O-ring pick in and gently remove the old O-ring. So nice and carefully like that. If the O-rings feel a little stiff, Give them a little squeeze and a twist in the seat. This will free the O-ring off and make it a little easier to remove. But again, we're just squeezing them, humping them up and then pulling them off.
Now, if your regulator has been sitting for a long time without a service, the O-rings can go very hard and brittle. In those cases, you're probably not going to be able to squeeze the O-rings and get them off with a plastic O-ring pick. In those sort of scenarios, what you need to do is be nice and careful and remove the O-rings with a blade. I will emphasize again the need to be very, very careful when doing this, but what you need to do is carefully cut through the O-ring, but not all the way. Cut through the O-ring, producing a nice score in it. Then you can pick the O-ring out with the blade. Now at this point I do want to again re-emphasize the need for safety and the fact that you don't want to damage any of the ceiling faces of the o-ring groove. The ceiling faces are the two sides of the groove as well as the base of the groove. So just be very very aware as you cut through. Luckily the o-rings on this particular regulator are still nice and soft so we can just remove them with our plastic o-ring pick. And then the final two are on the regulator piston. With the final o-ring off we can also remove the Belleville stack and it is advisable just to take a quick look at the Belleville stack before you take it off just so you know how it goes when we go to put it back on the regulator piston. But there we have it, there's the regulator fully disassembled. What I'm going to do now is fully degrease everything and get everything ready for the new o-rings to go on. To degrease the components, what I'm going to be doing is using some isopropyl alcohol along with a toothbrush and just give everything a nice good scrub. Then I'll blow everything off and make sure everything is nice and dry before we come back and rebuild the regulator. Right then, so I've given the regulator a real good clean up. I'm happy that all the parts are degreased and that all the old grease has been removed. So we can start on the rebuild process. The only thing that I would like to talk to you about very briefly is this component here, the white sealing disc. So the purpose of the white sealing disc is to act like a valve. And what it does is stop high pressure air from bypassing through the regulator when the rifle is sealed. When we take a shot, the white sealing disc deseats and allows air through the regulator until the regulator reaches its set pressure at which point the regulator piston, this component here, presses the white disc against the top of the adjuster screw, closing the regulator. In the Humor service kit, you do get a spare one of these little discs. However, if you're servicing your regulator normally, you can just flip it over and use the other side. I'm not quite sure how well the camera is gonna pick it up, but if we take a real good close look at the disc, you may be able to see a small dimple in the top. Again, I'm not quite sure how well the camera is going to pick it up, but with my eye, I can see a small dimple in the very top there. If we wanted to, we could flip this over and just use a fresh new flat face without having to use the spare that you get in the service kit. The white sealing disc should be replaced or flipped if your regulator is experiencing a high amount of regulator creep. And regulator creep is defined as any increase in pressure over the current set pressure of the regulator. So for example, if our regulator is set at 90 bar and we take a shot, the regulator should reset to 90 bar. If after 10 minutes of leaving the rifle stationary, we come back and recheck the reg pressure and it's at 110, that would be 20 bar of creep. That would either be caused by the white sealing disc, this piece here, or this o-ring on the base of the adjuster screw. In that scenario, both of these components here would be replaced. But there we have it, I just wanted to mention that before we get started on the rebuild. The first thing we're going to do is take a small amount of silicone grease and lube up the Belleville washers, these pieces here. We don't need tons of silicone grease on these, we just need a little bit on each one, so a small coating. Just a nice small coating will do us, we don't need tons on the Belleville washers. With that done, we can now get the Belleville washers stacked onto the regulator piston. 
Now the Belver washers themselves are stacked in pairs in alternating sets with the first pair being faced down towards the regulator piston. Now depending on your pressure setting there are a couple of different stack configurations so I'll put them on screen now so that you can see what the different stack configurations are. The next thing we can do is start adding the o-rings so we'll start adding on the piston o-rings first again just a small amount of silicon grease on these before we get started then hooking them over into their respective seats. Same goes for the adjuster screw. And then lastly the ones on the regulator body. The next thing we'll do is get the piston installed into the base of the body. Before that goes in I'm just going to be adding a small amount of silicon grease to the top of the piston. Then we'll be taking our white sealing disc and getting that dropped on top. So in our case we're reusing our old white sealing disc and we're making sure that we've got a nice fresh flat face facing up. With that done we can install that into the base of the body. Being nice and careful not to get the white sealing disc pinched between the walls of the body. Next we can get the adjuster screw installed and before that goes in I'm just going to be adding a little bit of extra grease to these two o-rings here as they do have to travel through a little bit of a hole. Getting those screwed in with a flat bladed screwdriver. What we'll do next is install the retention screw, so this little screw here in the top. And then with our finger on the base of the piston, what we're going to do is lightly do the adjuster screw up until we feel it coming into contact with the piston. So about there. Then we're going to go out about half a turn or a full turn and that should be there. With all that done, what you would do now is get the regulator reinstalled into your rifle, reset the reg pressure, and then you should be good to go. Because we're doing this on camera, what I'm going to be using is a reg tester, so we can get the regulator installed into the little tester there, and make sure it's all working as it should. Right then, so with the regulator installed into our little tester here, we've got everything pressurised up, our whips going in here, we have a bleed screw over here to simulate taking a shot. And on the regulator gauge here you can see we're at 2.7 bar. Now obviously that's a little low for an air rifle, so we're just going to adjust that up. Luckily with these externally adjustable regulators it's nice and simple. We have the adjuster screw in the base there, and then we can turn that counterclockwise to increase rig pressure. So we're going to be setting ours to about 90 bar, so we're going to be going up to about 80, then we'll simulate a couple shots just to make sure that we don't overshoot our setting. So we'll leave it there for a second, take a couple shots. And then we can continue adjusting the regulator. So there we have it, about 90 bar on the reg. Again, we can simulate taking a few shots. Generally speaking, it takes a little while for the regulator to settle at its final set pressure. So as you can see there, we had it set to 90 bar, but after a couple shots that dropped to one or two bar. But not to worry, we can just readjust that. So 92 bar, I'll take another few shots. And there we have it, there's our regulator settled. Right then, with that all said and done, I do want to briefly mention that these externally adjustable regulators can be adjusted up, no problem whatsoever. However, they cannot be adjusted down without first bleeding the entire system.
So obviously we're just using a little rig tester in this scenario. However, if you had a real rifle, you'd be shooting the rifle into a nice safe backstop, setting your rig pressure until you got it where you needed it to be. If you overshoot your target rig pressure, to adjust the regulator down, it's nice and simple. However, you do have to bleed the entire system. So as you can see here, I've bled the entire system. There's no air inside the regulator. Our bleed screw is wide open. Now we can take our flat bladed screwdriver and turn the adjuster screw clockwise to reduce the rig pressure. What we can do now is close our bleed screw, then re-guess up our system. We can then readjust our adjuster screw on the base there, and again, Counterclockwise increases rig pressure. And there we have it, there's our regulator pressure set to 90 bar exactly. Now it probably will settle a little lower than that, but you get the idea. We're obviously using a regulator tester, however you would be shooting your rifle into a nice safe backstop, setting the reg, and then if you did overshoot it, you would have to bleed the entire rifle out, reset the regulator, then try it again. If you're not sure on what your regulator pressure should be, there is a full data chart on the Daystate website that lists all of the models and the calibers, so if you don't have an accurate start point, I would recommend consulting the chart. With that all said and done guys, that's pretty much going to do it for this particular video. So thank you very much for watching, I hope it's been useful, and we'll see you in the next one.